Thank you. Can you hear me? Cool. Um, not much time to waste. So you've been looking at this screen already, so you know my name. Um, my background, I've got a long background with KDE and Qt and CMake. So I created modern CMake over a few years, uh, a few releases ago. And most recently, I've been getting into Clang and AST matchers because I wanted, I wanted to be able to do bulk refactoring or mechanical refactoring. Um, but my background is not computer science. That's not what I studied in university. I studied mechanical engineering. And so when I left university, I thought a translation unit was a meter. So um, I want to enable people like me to be able to do that kind of bulk refactoring without learning a whole lot about what the internals of a compiler is. Um, the advantages are pretty well known. You can scale and distribute your refactoring task if you do it mechanically. Um, you can write generic and reusable tools, and you generally make intractable problems tractable. So a lot of people uh, avoid doing big refactorings because they think it'll take too much time or they don't have a way to do it um, quickly or in a, in a reasonable time frame. Uh, and of course, we can write this stuff in C++, which we like. So, But there are downsides. The learning curve is very steep. You hit a lot of complexity very fast, uh, or very, very soon when you try to do this. And you need to get over, you need to learn a lot of that before you make any progress whatsoever. You need to have some familiarity with the Clang AST nodes, the matchers, uh, source locations. Um, and discovery of those things is quite difficult. Uh, the developer iteration is also very slow, partly because it's C++ again, so that's a downside. And there's no plugin system for Clang Tidy currently. So to make this stuff a bit more novice friendly, there's a bunch of stuff that we can do. More documentation, more presentations. Um, I won't be talking so much about those two in this talk. I'll be talking about collaboration features that I've worked on new features and existing tools like Clang Query and new tools that I've been writing for to enable faster iteration on these kind of problems. So there are other efforts going on in the community as well, which uh, I think Google has a hand in some of them and is sponsoring others. Um, so Aster, the idea there is that you give it old code and new code and it figures out what AST matches you need to write to effect that change. Um, and the Clang tooling transformation class uh, was recently checked in to Clang about a day or two ago. Um, and that allows you to, once you have used your AST matcher and bound some nodes, it allows you to specify changes like changing a name or replacing a name and replacing the entire node, etc. So I'll demonstrate those two later, hopefully. Then there's syntax tree as well, which aims to make uh, a manipulation of of uh, the source code easier. Um, so yeah, Clang Query is a great resource if you want to write uh, Clang tidy checks. It's not referenced well in the documentation yet, um, but I wrote a three-part series on the visual C++ blog uh, late last year, aimed at novices and new people, uh, just explaining Clang Query exists. You can set it to dump mode and dump the AST that was just not in the documentation of the um, previous content about this stuff. Uh, but then I also made Clang Query Explorer. Um, I have a ce.stevera.com uh, URL, but I'm using a local, uh, a local instance for presentation. So I, I just want to show that a little bit here. So it's Compiler Explorer, as you know from godbolt.org, but it's running, aside from your C++ code, you have Clang Query script. Uh, and unfortunately, this is very tiny. <laughs> so anyway, this is unfortunate. Uh, oh, let me move this. Yeah. Um, so you can write your You can write your Clang query queries and you get the result down here. So this kind of enables users to 
know what AST nodes exist. It lets novices know what exists because if you're just coming from your project, you've never looked at Clang source code, you've never seen a function decal or a binary operator. Um, but at least function decal is documented as like my first AST matcher uh, in a tutorial in the website. So you'll discover that. And you can discover then binary operator and uh, know that that's a top level uh, matcher. So that works, it's live updated. Um, you can very quickly learn some things about it. Uh, you'll also notice that the AST is much simpler than you might be used to. So all I'm printing out is the node name, the location of that node, and some uh, name or something about the node. I'm not printing out everything. But you can still print out everything if you want, if you enable detailed AST node. Um, so that's now, it puts used in there. I don't know what that means. Uh, there's some other locations that could print today. You get L value, parm, var, dickle, and it's kind of just a lot of stuff to throw at a novice who's never heard of any of this stuff. So um, I want to introduce a simpler AST dump, uh, get rid of the, the pointers as well. Um, yeah. So. Another thing you might notice uh, is the binary, binary operator here is not showing implicit casts. So if you've tried to dump a thing like this before, you might know that there are implicit nodes in the Clang AST. Um, and I'm ignoring them by default and just setting them to not exist just for um, ease of matching because otherwise if you wanted to match the decal FX for down there in the return statement, you'd have to explicitly account for those kind of implicit matchers, either using the ignoring implicit matcher or uh, matching them explicitly. So um, getting rid of those is a lot more user friendly uh, novice friendly at least. Um, but even if you think uh, that's not needed, you might think that ignoring implicit is enough. Uh, there's a lot of cases where that's not the case. Um, so here I have some C++ code. It's unfortunate how tiny this is, so sorry for that. Uh, but so I've got three functions, make, make B, make B2 and make B3. They each return a B but they're returning it by returning either a B, a C, or an A. Um, and there's implicit conversions between those. So um, if I was to write a matcher for that, I might discover that I have to write something like this. Um, and there I got all three of my results. But that won't work in today's Clang query and today's Clang tooling because you do have to account for a lot of other uh, implicit nodes. So today you would actually have to write something like this. You have to ignore implicit, but then you also have to explicitly account for the fact that there's hidden CXX construct experts and member call experts um, because you have to account for everything that's implicit in the tree. So that's kind of hard. I would prefer if we can just tell novices to write something like this because they'll write something like that for this first function that they try to write a matcher for and it'll automatically work for the other two without hitting the problem that it doesn't work for them and then finding out how to solve that. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so I kind of, I tried to express what the workflow is today for writing a Clang tidy check. And it's something like this. You identify what source code you want to port. Today you have to examine the AST, uh, write a 
match your query of some kind with client query, implement a fix it, so write your C++ code to do create insertion, create replacement, and you cycle that a few times and then eventually you're done. Um, but what I wanted to do was kind of eliminate the AST, the necessity to learn the AST from that. Um, and to do that, I introduced, uh, let's get this back. No. To do that, I introduced matcher output for client query. Um, so what that does is if I match a function decal, and here you can see it's just a simple multiply C++ function. Uh, if I enable output matcher, and I'm actually gonna remove the AST output. Um, match the function decal, it tells me I can write has parameter for that, and I get this match. And if I write has parameter one, I get the next one. Uh, has body, and I'm gonna match the compound statement, etc. And it also tells me these other things are true. So I can just copy and paste those into my matcher, and it'll still match. Um, so let's see if I can copy this in as well. Can't see anything. All right, and now I'm creating a binding for that as well, so I'll just rename that. And my client query output is just live updating, and now I can see matchers that relate to the parameter, the parmvar decal that I've just matched as well. Um, so it has name. I'll just copy that in. Okay, so now, um, now I have my matcher, and I might make a mistake, or I might think, well, you know, uh, this function has a B param, uh, and yet I'm not getting any results. It's telling me zero matches. So I might, you know, if you've got a lot of matcher code, uh, or something complex, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going wrong. Um, but another thing that I've written is debug output. So I want to break on line two because I expect that to match. And now what's happening is I get four breakpoints because four AST nodes start on line two. Um, and if I look down, oh, sorry. So I've set some breakpoints, and now I say I want to debug this AST matcher. And if I look down, it's telling me parameter count is two, that was fine, I get a yes green, that matched. But then this matcher down here did not match. And I can figure out why and realize, oh, I made a typo, the name is actually A, it's not B. Um, or maybe my parameter count, sorry, my parameter count is actually the problem. And I'll see, well, okay, so that was the last thing that it tried to execute. It didn't even try to test the has parameter. Um, so the parameter count is three must be the thing that's wrong. So that's quite useful, but then you also have these other breakpoints that get tested. They're all false because, you know, this is a compound statement, not a function decal. So we can just go here and delete break two. Um, that deletes breakpoint two and break list shows me that, I'm, that I have one, three, and four. So I could also delete breakpoints three and four if I want to have some clean output. Um, so that's debugging. Another thing you might want to do is profile. Um, and it's not really profiling, it's just hit counting. Uh, so it breaks up the matcher again, 
and um, uh, shows you how many times each master matcher was tested. So if I include vector here, uh, that count goes way up. And I might, I might have a has name in there or something which is using a regular expression and is, is maybe slower. And I might be able to just reorder my matchers to make that a lot faster. Okay, so um, that's trying to solve the discovery problem. Uh, and I've shown you some developer tooling, that's the debugger and the profiler. Uh, another thing that's really, I think would be really useful for Clang to do is have more output independent APIs. So diagnostics is a good example you know, the API there doesn't just stream to a text output or something. You can actually capture it and use it in some other way. And recently I refactored the AST dumper. Uh, it used to be just one class. And now there's a traverser and a separate output interface. And that means that you can output to a stream, but you can also output to JSON or anything else. So that's already upstream. And what I did was I took that and I implemented the Q, Q abstract item model interface for it. And that means that I can put an AST tree into a Q tree view. So, let me show you that. <clears throat> so what I have is I give this thing a compile database. It shows me all of the files in that compile database. And once I've chosen one, I can look at any of the files in that translation unit. And as I change it, um, I can see the source code and the AST limits itself to just that file. So I can click around and I think it should, well, I don't think I handle comments yet. But if I click on method decals and all this other stuff, it takes me to the place in the source code which relates to that AST node. So this is a lot more direct than other kinds of output. Um, but why stop there? So I also took Clang query and oops, put it into this UI as well. Uh, so if I actually, I actually have to click a matcher and I get the same kind of Clang query output for that, named bound nodes, uh, I can click on each of these. I also get in the source labels telling me where that bound node uh, is. So I can see locations as well. Um, let's show the locations and the nodes for this. So this is showing me all the places where uh, the, source, the um, source location is. So I can click on these, and I call this thing a stethoscope um, because anywhere I click, it shows me the, uh, the source location for that position in this node. Um, yeah, debugging works too. So if I put my breakpoint here, so if I click on the side, I get more stethoscopes and I can click them to set the breakpoint. Uh, so let me just clean this up. So if I click another method and hit that, it's showing me directly in my matcher source what matches and what doesn't. Um, I don't have time to demo it, but that also works through let stuff, you know, that you can also write in Clang Query. Um, all right, but uh, I don't want to stop there either. So, uh, Aster, I mentioned before, is a thing that, um, I actually don't think I have time to demonstrate that, sorry. So transform is another of the tools that's uh, just been checked in actually. So I have this record decal which I'm binding and I can, I have a combo box then which shows me all of the bound nodes. So I can choose that and I can say I want to replace the name and I say it's called matcher source range. And if you see on the, oh, sorry. I'm not actually showing you the right file. If you see that on this side, then I've renamed this 
the struct from source range to matter source range. So that's a, a sort of UI, it's pure UI like um, way to do refactoring like this with AST matchers and the transform class, which is new. Um, we can also just do clang tidy here in the UI. Um, so we have our matchers, and here I have just some JavaScript for writing the same kind of clang tidy checks that you would do in C++. Um, so there's just JavaScript bindings for the clang AST, and if I, well, it's, it's live updated, so if I change, let's see, uh, if I change this and just make a typo, First of all, it gets recompiled live in the UI as well. It's using the Clang virtual file system. So here, it's just telling me that it's a, a typo. And the diff is also updated just to show me what I've actually changed. Um, and no time to demonstrate it, but there's also a bulk porting dialog here. So if I know that that struct is only used in some subset of files, um, I can run it, and the reason I'm doing this is that this source range class is the same as the clang colon colon source range. So you get a lot of conflicts if you're writing AST matcher C++ code. Um, so I might think, I might want to rename that to matcher source range or so. So I can just specify which files I want my check to be run on, hit the run button, and it'll use a thread pool and in parallel port all these files that I've chosen and eventually uh, it'll come back with markers showing me which ones succeeded to compile after doing the port and which ones failed. So I'm getting green and red boxes here. Um, and part of the reason for that is I'm porting parameters and I'm porting fields, but I'm not porting return types. So I'm not doing a complete job here and that's why it's failing. So there's a few, um, so yeah, what, you know, I already showed this diagram, but what I'm trying to do further is just reduce the amount of developer iterations you have to do and the amount of time that that takes by getting away from C++ toward JavaScript um, and by putting everything in UI like that. Um, so there's a bunch of pending changes to Clang that need to go in. Uh, I've already spoken to some of you here about that. Uh, the Profiling and debugging just works with a debugger interface. So that's something we should talk about in review too. Um, and the source location introspection comes from a build time introspection of the, uh, the Clang AST files. Uh, the JavaScript bindings that I mentioned are also generated at build time by parsing the AST.h with AST matchers. So that's also something that I wanna get upstream. Um, so, in summary, there's a lot of barriers to creating AST matchers and using them for bulk refactoring that Clang, Clang novices hit. Um, so we need to shorten the iteration time that it takes to debug and make your Clang tidy check actually work. Um, do that by using interpreted languages, both the interpreted Clang, uh, Clang AST matchers and JavaScript, and giving live updates and live recompiles and everything like that. Um, so one of the reasons that I'm here is I wonder if I have the right analysis, you know, uh, are the things that I think are difficult for novices really true? Is that right? Is there interest in LLVM and getting this kind of novice friendly stuff upstream? And does anyone want to help? Um, and Unfortunately, uh, oh, so that's, is there still time for questions? So yeah, so we still have five minutes for questions um, if there are any in the audience. Thanks, Stephen. So we have five minutes for questions. <laughs>